Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Nerf target that will catch your darts on a budget. So, what we're going to need for this build a box, some packing tape, a box cutter or scissors, whichever you have, tape measure, and something to mark with. Alright. So, like I said, we're going to be building a Nerf target with two main criteria. First of which, it has to catch our darts, because I think we all know that Nerf is super fun, but the worst part is after you've been shooting for a while, you have to go and pick up all your darts, and they always seem to roll under couches and behind things, and it's just a pain to have to go pick them all up. So, a good target has to catch everything you shoot at it. Alright, and the second is this has to be done on a budget. I'm trying to do this as cheaply as possible so that everyone, even on any budget, can build something like this. You might be able to do this for completely free with stuff you have laying around the house, so that's my goal. Uh, like I said, you're going to need a box. It doesn't necessarily matter what size you're using, but a bigger box is going to be able to hold more darts before you have to gather them all up again and it gives you a bigger target to shoot at. Uh, I went with this extra large box from Home Depot. I think I paid about six dollars for this, like five or six bucks. So, very cheap. Uh, and here's my dimensions if you care to use the same box. It's 21 inches tall, 24 inches wide, and 20 inches deep. Alright. Uh, next things that you're going to want to make sure you have is that packing tape. I would not recommend using duct tape. I actually first assembled this box with duct tape and left it out in my garage and the next day the duct tape had already peeled off and wouldn't hold. So if it's going to be stored somewhere that heat's going to get to it, go with just some packing tape. It's purpose made to hold boxes together. Um, when it comes to uh, measuring if you don't have a tape measure, that's fine. Just use a ruler or something. That'll be completely fine. Um, all right. As you can see, I've already started by building my box, at least the bottom half. I've taped it together. But to build this target, we are going to need to do some more preparation. But before we get to that, let me talk about that piece of cloth. So. This is going to be what actually catches your darts. It's going to be in the back of the target, so your darts can hit it and lose all of their energy and fall into the box without bouncing out. I just used, this is a piece of old sheet that I had laying around in my garage. Uh, used it to cover stuff whenever I was painting or working on a car or something like that. This would just, this was, it was just a drop cloth, basically. So, old sheet, didn't cost me anything, super old. Um, the dimensions I cut this to, my target is going to be oriented this way, so the 24 inch width is going to be flat and it's going to be the 20 inches high, so I cut this to be 24 inches wide, but a few extra inches long, the tall way so that I can affix it to the box, and I'll show you how I do that later. But make sure you give yourself a few extra inches, at least two. I think I went with three on this, but you can make it as, as long as you want, as long as it's taller than your target. Alright, let's put that to the side. Okay, like I said, we're going to need to do a little bit more preparation to this box. And what we're going to need to do is we don't want all of these top flaps. So, we're going to pick which portion of our target is going to be our actual top, and we're going to cut the top flap and both side flaps off. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, this would be pretty easy with a pair of scissors, but I'm just going to use I'm going to use this box cutter, fold those out of the way. Uh, I'm just going to use this guy, and I'm going to cut along the fold line right here where it connects. Uh, if you're using a box cutter, please don't cut into 
anything you don't mind cutting. how the target's going to sit, and we kept this flap for a reason. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure a few inches up from the bottom here so that we can tape it kind of like this, so that when you shoot into the box, this will keep everything from falling out. So we're not going to go too high. We're going to go about... I'd say three inches is probably all we need here. This is just to get my marker here. This is just to catch and retain all of those darts. So we're gonna measure three inches from that fold line. I'm gonna get a mark on one side and the other. Okay. Now that we have those marked out, we have our two little red dots. Now if you don't have a straight edge or something long enough to mark across here, you can use a piece of that box flap that you just cut off, just make sure it's the right size, and use the edge you didn't cut that came flat. We're going to lay that down, connecting our two dots, get our marker again, it doesn't matter if you have a nice straight line here, but it will look better for a final product if the line's nice and straight. So we're going to use that to make a little straight edge and mark a line, just like this. So now, hope you can see that. Yeah, you can see that decently. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to cut following that line. straight cut. Alright, and like I said, this is just going to be taped up in this position, just so when the darts fall they don't roll out the front of it. Alright, so we're going to use some of our packing tape. I'm going to tape as close to the top of this lip as possible just so the tape has the best, best chance of keeping that where it should be. So right up at the top of the front lip, make sure to press it in real good, fold it back where you want it. Rest of it to make sure it gets a good connection. Alright, so our box is almost completely prepped at this point. Uh, the reason we don't leave the box just like this, which you could, obviously, you could just use this to shoot darts at. 
But there's going to be two problems with that. Your shots are most likely going to hit the back and bounce out, and it's going to be really loud. So let's just uh, let's go ahead and go ahead and test that and see if this would be all right on its own. Got the give this guy a test. So yeah, like I said, very loud, and that dart bounced right out, didn't catch anything. Alright. Okay, so the next step, and the most important, to actually make this a good enough target to use, is going to be that sheet. Now, like I said, I am using a old bed sheet. And I cut it to where I have, hope you can see it here, the top stitched over area, so it's a little thicker at the bottom, and so that's going to hold, or it's going to put a little bit more weight down, which might help uh, catch a few more darts, but you don't have to use a bed sheet, you can use anything you have lying around. An old towel would work, um, a pillowcase, depending on the size of your box, just anything you have laying around that your dart can hit and it can start to absorb the energy and make it fall down. So, old towel, sheet, whatever you got. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to pick a spot on the top of our box a distance from the back. We don't want to put the sheet right at the front because most of the darts won't end up inside of your inside of your target. So, we're going to go back, and we also don't want it completely on the back because it won't have enough space to absorb the energy of the dart and drop it down into our target. So I think we have a we have a real deep box here, so I can get away with putting it pretty much anywhere in the back half, probably. But we are going to, let's say a good uh, six inches is what we're going to go with here. Uh, if you do have a shallower box, it, this type of target probably won't work on a very shallow box. So, you're going to want something that's at least a foot deep, like minimum, I would say. And you're going to want to put that, your piece of cloth, at least, I'd say at le minimum three inches from the back. But I'd like to see more like four to five inches to give the cloth enough time to absorb that energy. Alright, so just like with the front lip, I am going to mark six inches from the back on each side. Now that I have those two marking points, let's see if I can do one from the right off. Little dot here, and on the other side, I can do just what I did with that front flap. I'm going to use the straight edge from the side of the box I didn't cut before, so I know it's nice and flat. I'm going to mark up those two dots. I'm going to draw a line along the top here. Okay. Now that I have my line drawn, you can see it there, I'm going to take my box cutter and I'm going to cut across this line. Now, I want to make sure that I don't cut through the corners, so I'm going to come just shy of the corners on each side, just so that you don't hurt the, the structure of the box, so it's going to last longer. So, I'm going to come a little bit in from the corner, and then cut... 
all the way down the box. Being careful not to bend it or break it in any way that I don't want. We're going to stop just before we come through the corner. And now we have this nice slit in the box. And what we're going to use that for is we are going to bring our sheet, our cloth, our towel, or whatever you're using, and we're going to poke it up from the inside, through this slit, fold it over, and tape it. And that will give us a nice secure hold, where if we just taped it on the inside of the box, eventually it is going to fall off. So, I'm going to reach in, poke the sheet through. Now that I have a corner through, pull most of the rest. And I have that heavier part with the seam that I showed you earlier down. And now I have it pulled through all the way up top. And I obviously have too much. That's just so you can make sure I had it all pulled through. And now, let's, yeah. I'm going to turn this around and make sure that I have it hanging as close to the bottom as possible. And I'm going to, since I've cut it long enough, I'm going to have it just, just dragging the bottom in here and try to get it as straight as possible. Okay. So, as you can see, it's just hanging in there and I have it slightly too long, so it is dragging on the bottom. And we have just a little bit left up top here, and I'm going to fold that back and tape it down really good. Okay. of the box and onto that cloth. So, as you can see, the tape went on either side of where I cut and is taping down my piece of cloth in there. Give it a good press and that should hold your cloth in place. I'm going to go ahead and pull that forward a little bit so that it's as far from the back as it wants to drape. All right, now this might complete our build here. We're going to have to do some testing. Uh, you can decorate your box however you want. You can cover it in stickers, you can paint it, draw on it, or leave it as a cardboard box like I'm probably going to do. Now, what this is actually doing let me grab that dart I shot before. It's when you shoot your dart, it's going to come in and hit that sheet and continue to try to go and hit back, but the sheet will absorb the energy and hopefully drop the dart right down to the bottom. And even if that dart gets a little bit, bounces back a little bit, hopefully this lip will keep it from rolling out or bouncing out. All right. Let me reset our cloth in there. And I'm going to reset up here a little bit, and let's do some testing. So I'll see y'all in a second. All right, I'm set up here to do some testing, and I've selected two different blasters to use. First is going to be the Nerf Ultra 3, so a high power single shot. Let's see how the target holds up. All right, it did great. Uh, I caught all five of those easily. I hope you could see how that was working in there. All right, my next selection is the Nerf Ultra Select. 
I'm going to be firing 10 darts, fully automatic, and see if it can keep up. All right, let's see what it does. All right, I say that is a great success, as you can see. Caught all the darts right here in the bottom. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted it to do. Cushioned all the darts, dropped them down, wasn't as loud when it hit the back, so successful test. All right, after that successful test, I'd say our budget target is functionally done. Uh, the only things to do to it now are personalize it however you like. You could draw a target to actually shoot at inside on the cloth, hang some targets to shoot at, that kind of thing. Uh, decorate it how you want, and then have some fun. So under $10 for a fully functional budget target that'll catch all your darts. So I'd say that's a success. So I think that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, let me know if there's any type of crafts or targets or anything you want to see me make in the future. So comment that below. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out my other videos. And I'm Travis, and I'll see you next time.